Hello, this is Daniel Martz, and today I'm going to be doing another review. This one's going to be for episode 12 of season 5 um, of The Walking Dead, and it is called Remember. So yeah, um, yeah. sorry for putting this off. I actually got, someone actually commented on my previous video, um, the Love and Mercy Love and Mercy trailer review. Um, someone commented commented on that video, nervously YouTubing, commented on that video, and he said, and I quote, Daniel, where is the review for the last episode of The Walking Dead? In parentheses, 5x12, five, five you know, season 5, episode 12. I'm waiting for the, for it, exclamation mark, happy face. So yeah, um, thanks, you know. Um, I've actually, I, I usually never get messages like that, you know, yo, was that this review for that? Or, you know, normally I get recommendations of what should I, what should I watch or what should I be watching. And normally I do fall out, not normally, so I... I sometimes um, fall through with them because I, I don't have time to either review it or watch it. So I watched the episode. I um, just haven't had time to actually review the actual episode because because of testing. There's a lot of testing right now. You know the government testing, um, right? You know, you know statewide tests and whatnot. You know, just trying to prepare for that. So you know, I have my priority priorities set straight. I'm um, sad, but he commented that on my Love and Mercy trailer review. And for those who don't know what Love and Mercy is, it's basically the Beach Boys um, movie that's coming out like in July. I'm um, sad, but aside from that, now onto the review. I'm um, sad. Thanks nervously do YouTubing. Um, so yeah, now onto the review. Before I begin, though, ten seconds, ten seconds spoiler warning as usual for those who have yet to actually watch the the episode of Hamlet already. Stop the video, go check it out, and come back and watch the rest of this review. 10 seconds for the warning as usual starting now. <clears throat> okay, so 10 seconds are up. So for those that have yet to actually watch the video episode of Hamster already, um, please don't comment down below or be messaging me. That never gave you a fair warning because as usual, I did. So yeah, um, remember episode 12, season 5. Um, Walking Dead, what did I think of it? As usual, quick synopsis, likes and dislikes, and then the rate. Um, so yeah, basically in this episode, you have, you have the group, and they're getting into Alexandria, you know, they're, they come into Alexandria, and you have the, the leader, um, the leader, her name is Diane, um, and she's kind of a remix of a character from the comics, Douglas, in the comics, it's Douglas, and in the TV show, it's Diana, um, but essentially, they're the same character, they're both, um, state politicians for Ohio, um, you know, they've served a couple of years, they both have, um, children, and they're both married. Um, so yeah, in the TV show, the, her spouse is Reg Monroe, and in the comics, the spouse is called Regina Monroe. Um, so yeah, and then in, in the TV show, her son is called Aiden Monroe, and in the comics, I believe it's Spencer Monroe. It's just, it, they're still sons, so yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool, having a remix of her, I thought that was interesting, cool, um, thing is that she doesn't seem as intimidating in the TV show as, as Douglas is in the comics. Because in the comics, he, he kind of looks like Heisenberg, you know, Walter White, Heisenberg. He kind of looks, he kind of looks kind of intimidating. And in the TV show, she's like this, it's like a frail old lady. She's probably in her mid-50s. She's kind of frail. She's not really that intimidating, so whatever. So basically, she interviews every single member of Rick's group. Um, we see her interview with Rick, Michonne, Daryl, Carl, Glenn, I believe. Yeah, and Glenn and, and Carol. And they're all pretty good. I think Carol was the most interesting one because, she, and because she she put on this facade of you know she put on this facade of her being this innocent woman. You know, like she was basically a mom she, who lost her kid, and you know she did suffer through it. But you know the group still kept her regardless. When in reality, she's this she's a cold blooded killer um, who took down a whole a whole camp. You know, terminus. Well, I mean she had help, but you know she essentially took down a whole camp. She's basically Rambo. Um, so yeah. And then she puts on this facade, like, yeah, I'm like your mom, you know, I like to cook, I like to care for the children and the old people. And she gets this job of working for the old people, so it's just, whatever. Um, so I thought that was pretty funny and interesting, in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, throughout the episode, you have every single member trying to get into, like, trying to incorporate their, some, themselves into Alexandria, within Alexandria, you know, trying to fit into Alexandria. You could, you could tell that Daryl, he has a pretty hard time actually fitting in. Because he doesn't really want to fit in. Even in his interview, you can tell that he doesn't really want to fit in. Um, Glenn, he, he fits in somewhat. He's with the runner and Aiden and Nicholas. He's with both of them. And it's funny because these two people, uh, they, ha they, ha they kidnapped this walker as revenge for killing their friends. And Glenn's like, fuck it, I'm just going to kill him. 
I mean, yes, the walker did attack them, so he kills them, which is the most logical thing to do. But Aiden, Aiden, he gets pissed off, and then Aiden gets knocked on his knocked on knocked on his ass um, by Glenn. And then it's funny because Daryl just tackles Nicholas, which I thought was pretty hilarious. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, this group isn't really pre prepared for the zombie apocalypse. If anything, um, apparently, the origins for Alexandria in the TV show is that the military came around. Rounded up all these people saying, you know, we'll come back and save you later. Never came back. They had tons of supplies. And here we are now. Um, so, yeah, they're not really prepared. I mean, you have a few people who there who seemed a bit prepared. Um, but overall, none of the characters are really prepared. Um, you know, Rick's group, they're all prepared for the most part. Um, even, I mean, even Father Gabriel, he's prepared. Eugene, even he's prepared. Hell, even Judith is prepared for this, for the zombie apocalypse. But then you have, like, these people in Alexandria who are barely prepared. I think if anything the most prepared people in Alexandria would be would be Aaron and Eric, Nicholas, possibly Aiden. Though he though Nicholas and Aiden they do have their issues. They kinda need to work out. And there's this one character, Anid. She's a girl, she's probably like 15, 16 years old, and she's probably pre prepared in a zombie apocalypse too because supposedly they rescued her eight months prior to Rick's Rick's group coming to Alexandria. So yeah it was an interesting episode. Here's the thing, I didn't really like the episode that much. I really didn't. It seemed kind of boring in my opinion. I mean, the dialogue and acting was good, but I just feel like now that they're in Alexandria, it's going to be boring. It's going to be way too safe. I mean, hopefully they do show them going out on runs for the group. But it's just boring. Uh, and Alexandria just seems boring. I mean, you have Rick, and he shaves his beard, which is pretty cool. You know, he it looks like he just aged, like... Not age, like he just lost ten years. So you know you do have a few comic book Easter eggs within the within this show episode, but overall it's just I mean yeah boring. It's just that's how I describe the episode. It's just boring. I mean it's just filled with Easter eggs. There are a few exciting moments towards the end, um, and funny moments towards the end, but overall it's just boring. I mean you have Rick and he's flirting with someone, which again does happen in the comic books, but you know whatever. You know, so he's trying to find love again, like some bullshit like that. You know, he has, you have Carl, and he's supposed to play video games right now. And like, like okay, he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, you guys, why do you guys play your zombie games, your zombie video games, killing people, fake digital people? I'm gonna be here actually training myself. And yeah, I mean, even in the prison, um, Carl, when when we saw those flashbacks at the end of season four, we saw Carl, and he was handling a gun, he was cleaning out his gun. Then you have Patrick, he's just playing with Legos, like a small, innocent child. So, you know, you just see the two extremes, and even here you see even more. You have Rick. I mean, Rick says he's killed people. Um, I mean, for the most part, everybody in Rick's group, except for Glenn, Eugene, and Father Gabriel, except for those three, everybody else has more or less killed someone. Because Abraham, we know he's killed people. We saw the fast tracks. Rosita, it's been hinted that she's killed at least one person. From what it seems like, it's been hinted that she's killed at least one person. So, except for Eugene, Father Gabriel, and Glenn, which, surprisingly, if you don't know, Glenn has yet to actually kill a person. Aside from those three, everybody has killed someone. And even, and even after that, Glenn is prepared for the zombie apocalypse. Father Gabriel, yeah, she, she, he was protected for a while. But even after that, he toughened up. And he's killing zombies now. Eugene, he's also killing zombies now. And, yeah, I mean, Judith could be killing zombies at the age of two, for God's sakes. So, it, it really pisses me off. I don't, I don't know. I just didn't like this episode at all. It just seems, it seemed, it just really seemed to be filled with Easter eggs, in my opinion. It was just like one Easter egg after another Easter egg after another Easter egg after another Easter egg. And you can't really rely on Easter eggs to help you move forward in an episode so yeah i really enjoyed the previous episode and then here we're back to like episode nine of the uh you know where tyrese and i were just being, seemed out of place or just didn't seem properly right it was like one easter egg after another after another the only thing i could say that i did like it about it is that it gave me a ton of discussion topics but here are the ones i'm, gonna, I'm planning on doing um alexandra save stone explained um will daryl leave alexandria um or leave the group who stole the gun that, that was in the blender? Yeah, someone actually stole the gun that was in the blender. Um, and why did Anid leave Alexandria? So I found four discussion topics. So I, think, I guess that's good. So, you know, you could hope that um, for that by Saturday and Sunday. Um, yes, Saturday or Sunday because I'm, yeah, I'm probably off for Saturday because I'm going to be busy this weekend with my birthday. But that's a whole other story. 
So, I mean, overall, I just found the episode really boring. I tried to get into it, you know, but I just felt like there's one Easter egg after another, after another, after another, and it just... Nah. I, you can't rely on Easter eggs, and that, and that pissed me off a, re- a lot. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, and 6 being decent, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. I'm sorry, but it sucked. Boring. With just one Easter egg after another, after another. There were a few exciting parts. Acting dialogue, as usual, pretty great, but... And it gave me a few discussion topics. We got the introduction to Alexandria, but everybody everybody here was like season one survivors, and that really pissed me off. So yeah, that's basically it for now. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. Comment down below on, on your thoughts on this episode. Did you like it or did you, you know, or did you hate it? Just not hate it, dislike it, whatever. What are your thoughts on it? Comment on that down below. Let me know. Um, thanks again for nervous for nervously YouTubing. Um, so yeah. And aside from that, like the videos on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever you guys prefer. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Daniel Mart. And aside from that, that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.